Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. I do appreciate it. I hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 again. Surprise! And um, I'm playing around with adjustable gradient, and this is going to be a deep dive video on that uh, filter slash tool that's in the Pro Adjustment tab. Now, I've used adjustable gradient for, I don't know, however long it's been in Luminar. I think it was in the initial uh, first launch version back in God, was that 2017 or something? Anyway, um, I've loved it and used it for a long time. It's really fabulous and really powerful. I'm gonna jump into that, but first I gotta say thanks for all the feedback and comments and interaction on all my previous videos. I'm having a lot of fun making these Luminar 4 videos. Hope you're getting a lot out of them and based on the comments and feedback and interaction, I think you are, so I appreciate that. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up, that lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. And I'm gonna keep doing it and uh, I just appreciate that support very much. So. Thank you very much, and let's get into it. Okay, I'm on the Pro tab. Adjustable gradient is right here, and as the name implies, it's adjustable and it's a gradient. So a gradient basically means um, you have a transitional zone between no edit and some, and it, it merges from no edit to some edit to full edit. Let me explain. First, you can do set orientation. So here's where I usually use adjustable gradient. Shots like this, like a landscape, where you have a sky and a ground, that would be a landscape, I guess, Hey, newsflash. Um, but uh, basically, normally, you don't always have equal lighting conditions, or if you're like me and you like to do a little bit more creative kind of stuff on the edits, maybe you want to change the lighting conditions. Like this photo is actually somewhat evenly balanced in terms of its lighting, but adjustable gradient is particularly good at landscapes because a lot of times you may have a much brighter sky and a much darker foreground, typical sort of result with a uh, landscape photo. And adjustable gradient is great at helping you fix that because it allows you to divide the top from the bottom and make adjustments accordingly in each section. The great thing about it is you pick what's top and you pick what's bottom. So let me show you, that's where set orientation comes in. So you click on that and as soon as you get your uh, mouse cursor over the photo, you will see this little thing show up. So here in the center you have a, a straight line and you can see that you can grab this line and turn it if you need to, which I will be doing in this photo. Um, between that center line and the top line is a gradient zone. So that center line divi div blah, 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 divides top from bottom. Above that center line to that top line, you have sort of the gradient, which means you get a, a varied or gradual impact of the effects that you do in this top section. Above that top line, you'll get the full impact of those effects. The reverse is true for the bottom. So whatever you define as bottom will fall below this uh, center line and you'll get a gradual increase of, of impact of the effect from that bottom line, uh, or excuse me, from that center line to that bottom line, it'll gradually increase and then you get the full effect of whatever you do in the bottom down below. So in this case, oh, by the way, you can also drag these and increase or decrease the size of that gradient zone, which is really powerful. One tip I recommend is if you're trying to blend a horizon in and do some lighting changes, I would be really careful about um, compressing this gradient zone really tight because when you get it really tight and then you do a big light change, you may see a thin line of light um, kind of across the bottom. So just be careful. Um, but everything's experimentation. So like with, you know, um, I think my answer to most questions in Luminar is it depends. Um, and, and that's like with photography pretty much, right? So um, here we go. I've got the gradient zone set like that. I'm going to say done. And now I'm in top. And the great thing you can see here is you have six controls. So exposure, how bright or dark do I want it? Contrast, shadows, highlights, and then you have warmth and vibrance. It's a wonderful collection of tools here, I think. It's why Adjustable Gradient made it in my top 10, which I talked about in that video. So for the top, I'll take exposure down a little bit and I'll bring up some contrast. And you can see what that's doing. It's helping to pop the edge of those hills because I'm adding some contrast in the top of that tree on the left. Maybe I'll take the shadows and the highlights down a little bit. Maybe I'll take the temperature down, cool it off a little bit. I like bluer skies. Those gray skies in photos, I like to make them kind of blue. I just, I got a blue thing. Um, and then maybe a little bit of vibrance. And let me show you the top already. If you just look at the top of the photo, there's before and after and a sliding difference you can see. I mean, it's had a pretty sizable impact on the photo. Now I can go over and click on bottom and do the same thing. So here I might take the exposure down a tiny bit. I might want to do more contrast, well, maybe not that much, maybe more contrast, something like that. Um, and then shadows, maybe lift it a tiny bit because I did add a lot of contrast. 
maybe bump the highlights a little bit because it's going to pop that kind of rocky sand on this uh, this river here and maybe cool it off a tiny bit and give it a bump in vibrance and you know what i've got a pretty nice looking photo and all i did is use adjustable gradient and that's why i like it so much because it has a lot of power in addition to separating top from bottom it gives you the exposure the contrast the shadows the highlights the warmth and the vibrance those are things i do kind of on every photo so i can just say hey there's top there's bottom make my edits and i can be done so it's very powerful and let me show you there's the before and there's the after and a sliding difference here you can see now, to be honest, I would not say that I'm done with this photo. There's some things I would do. Um, I'd probably go use negative structure for the sky. I'd probably get the eraser and take out that little thing and probably this little sign over here. I'd probably crop it. I would, I would do some additional things. So I don't want to imply that adjustable gradient is a one filter editing tool and you don't need anything else. It can be. I could theoretically say I'm done with this photo. It's not like it really needs a lot more, but... Um, I'm just I just like to go edit photos so I would go do more but you don't necessarily have to so depending on the photo again it depends um, depending on the photo you could use it just about as the only tool to use on a photo probably not often um, and certainly not always but sometimes this is an example of where you probably could now there's some other cool things you can do with it let me give you one more example now that last shot was from Wales uh, when I was there this past summer. I was also in London for a few days. Here's a shot from London. I love this little spot. It's between St. Pancras and King's Cross Station underground, somewhere down in, under between those two, kind of. Anyway, if you go, go find it. It's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, I was down there looking for people to shoot, and this one lady walked by, so I got her. But here's a cool thing with set orientation. As I said, is you can flip this uh, to your heart's content. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use it because that left side of the frame over here is really too bright. And there's not really a good way to just go darken that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the uh, adjustable gradient like that. Actually, I'm gonna come back a little bit and I'm gonna go about like that. Um, I experiment and I recommend experimenting. I'm gonna say done. And that's my top to the left. So I'm gonna say exposure down. And you can see I'm dropping the exposure in that section of the photo. Um, it was bugging me. I'm going to increase the contrast in that section of the photo. And you can see it's kind of warm. So you could warm it up if you wanted to get that play of color, the yellow versus the blue. Or you could cool it off if you kind of wanted to do that. In which case, I noticed that if you look here, that zebra kind of pattern looking thing that's reflecting from the right side is showing up better. Um, anyway, that's an idea. And then I've got the bottom. So I can click over there and I can say, well, maybe I want to raise the exposure on the bottom. Maybe I want to give it a little bit of contrast and maybe a little bit of warmth and a little bit of vibrance. Um, and I can show you, there's the before and the after. I kind of rearrange the light because I darken the left side and I brighten the right side, which is top and bottom in this case, simply because I took the orientation uh, marker and I, and I set it vertically instead of, instead of horizontally. So if you look at the difference, I mean, that, that side is vastly different. It may not be to your taste, totally fine. I'm not saying this is something you should do. I'm saying this is something you could do in a photo like this where you have a vertical sort of thing. Um, and there you go. I mean, I think I've got a brighter, more vibrant right-hand side of the image um, and a darker, less vibrant left side of the image. Again, season to taste, do whatever you want. And there's plenty more I would do to this photo, including I'd go just just put a vignette on here because it just screams vignette. And I did a video about vignette right there if you want to check it out. But that's really it for adjustable gradient. It's super powerful. It's super awesome. It is in my top 10, as I said in that previous video. I absolutely adore this thing. I use it all the time. And uh, I highly recommend getting um, comfortable with it and using it and experimenting with it on your photos. And I'm going to keep doing some deep dives. So please let me know what you think about this video. Thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. And um, by all means, leave a comment and say, hey, Jim, how about a deep dive on textures or, you know, advanced contrast or whatever it may be that you're interested in seeing deep dives on? Because I got plenty more that I'm doing. I've got a lengthy list of stuff, but I always want to hear what you guys are looking for, because honestly, I kind of sit here in my office, scratch my head and say, hey, that's kind of cool. I should talk about that. And then I do it. Sometimes people say, hey, we do this and I'll do it. I'm open. So let me know. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you're having a super awesome day. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later and adios.